we have to have to have to get on talking about the flipping major story the last couple of days of course has been um frank ocean's not so epic performance at coachella not so epic performance at coachella and i have a lot of thoughts i have a lot of interpretation on this i'm sure some of you guys have probably got your own thoughts haven't seen some of the clips and stuff online regarding his um flipping what you call it his um performance over that coachella meant to be a headlining set meant to be a headlining set but it kind of failed to kind of live up to expectation um especially when you consider um you know the level of artist that he is and whatnot but essentially um frank ocean was booked to be a headliner on the sunday i think of coachella i think yeah friday so yeah you meant to be the headliner on sunday and obviously it was a super anticipated performance because he hadn't performed in years um obviously there's not been an album in a long time also and he's basically been ghost and mia um you know for a very long time also and in between that time he's done a few projects here and there but the major part the major thing he's launched in between that time has been homer his jewelry um brand and he's got a store i think somewhere in new york also that he has but homer's been doing absolute bits but on the music side he's kind of been a bit quiet um with the exception of a few songs here and there um the apple radio show that he does but we haven't really got any indication of him returning back in any significant way so everybody heard myself included being a frank ocean fan that hey he's coming back at coachella it was like wow that'd be an amazing thing to see and then of course with the weekend when it started out um, i think the first performance i saw was push a t on a friday live streamed on flipping the coachella youtube account it seemed amazing it seemed like a great opportunity for fans worldwide who weren't able to go to coachella to see one of their favorite artists in frank ocean perform live on a sunday live streamed from the comfort of their home own homes um extended set whatever it may be closing set be a great opportunity for him to perform but unfortunately, it didn't turn out to be the way that we kind of hoped it would be and ended up being an absolutely catastrophe. And one of the things we have to kind of get out of the way, and I think this is really, really important, is that number one, his look could have told you everything you need to know about the performance that you were going to get there. This is courtesy of an account over on Twitter, and it kind of showcases um, essentially what this performance looked like of Frank Ocean performing at Coachella. And this is him wearing... Um, what looks like you an outfit you would wear if you were popping out to the shops quickly to go grab some milk and some bread he's got a um you know a nondescript outdoors but you know down jacket on some really comfortable pants and what look like hotel slippers i'm sure they're not but they look like hotel slippers. I'm sure there's something a bit more designer and a bit more cooler but they essentially look like the free slippers that you get in hotels let me play the clip of frank ocean's performance at coachella and the funny thing is he's dancing around you know basically miming along to the or singing along to the flipping music without a mic and just vibing kind of doing what playboy carty does but without the screaming into the mic and jumping around and then i think just recently they put out a press release from his pr team or something that he hurt his ankle that's why he didn't perform correctly but in this clip there's no way he could hurt his ankle so that was obviously catastrophic and then on top of that you've got this clip which maybe gives some context as to why the performance was so bad because if you're not aware he turned up an hour late um he basically phoned in the performance for the most time he was sitting down singing or humming along to some of his tracks there was an interim stage where a dj came on and played who people rate as a dj but unfortunately she was getting pelters also because the set wasn't the greatest and she kind of popped out of nowhere then some backing singers were singing then he would get on the camera in front of the camera basically and be kind of flexing on some of the big screens but you couldn't actually see him on stage if you were in there and in general the performances wasn't great and wasn't really what people kind of assumed it would be and it was really minimal singing and involvement from frank himself over there but i think this speech may give an indication as to why frank was the way he was when he was performing at coachella this is frank's speech at coachella and this may explain his kind of state of mind overall it's been so long <laughs> but i have missed you why i'm here because it's not because of a new album it's because not that there's not a new album it's like okay. 
But there's not right now. No, it's church, it's church. Not right now, it's not right now. But, you know, the last couple years, um, my life changed so much. And, um, Check me out. So, I want to just. My brother and I, we came to this festival a lot. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I was dragged out here half the time because I hated the dust out here. I was with the respiratory infection or whatever. So, I, I would like avoid coming in. He would always. I would always end up here. And um, one of my fondest memories was watching Ray Strummer on. I don't know what that stage is called, but watching Ray Strummer with my brother. And and Travis, I don't know if Travis Taco is here, but we were just dancing in that tent uh, to their music, and um, I know he would have been so excited wow. to be here with all of us. And and, and, um, and I want to say thank you for um, the support and the ears and the love over all this time. Um, and I'm going to get back to the songs. Anyway, basically, he wasn't in the right state of mind. And if you heard the speech in full, sorry because my flipping computer is going a bit crazy, so it wasn't able to play it you know, smoothly. But essentially, he's still grieving. And you can hear it by the sound of his voice when he mentioned his brother because um, sometime in 2020, I think it was just around the pandemic, I remember it happening. Um, unfortunately, his young brother called Ryan uh, passed away in a car accident uh, i think he had a car crash and he died on the scene which is really really sad and gruesome even more so because i remember at the time there was um video footage of a news station on the scene when it happened um and the car was you know i think it crashed somewhere into a car or maybe into a lamppost and it was just on fire and i guess the kid unfortunately couldn't get out or they couldn't get him out because the fire was just too much and um the car was basically just lit on fire for ages Um, until the fire services had to kind of get there and the image is still seared in my mind of a video that basically shows a new station there and it pans over and you see frank on the floor on the side of the pavement like with his head with his basically head in his hands on the scene as this thing happened so um you can only imagine what that must have been like you know have seeing your brother essentially die in front of you and you're basically powerless to help so clearly the guy's not in the right mental state of mind to do any kind of performing anytime soon like it's not going to happen so for me as a fan i think most fans themselves out there knew this was the case but then when you're seeing him do other projects when you're seeing him accept the you know invitation to go and perform at coachella even though this felt like it was a contractual obligation because he didn't do the one in 2020 because obviously the pandemic and then now he kind of was obligated to follow through with this one and maybe he couldn't afford the fine whatever it may be if you're a fan you just assume that he might be in a place that would allow him to perform like you know decent or maybe step out and kind of be in the good spirits you maybe would think so but after hearing that speech clearly he hasn't recovered or he would probably never ever be over the fact that his brother passed in that way and it's probably fundamentally changed him i think i threw out a theory that quite possibly this is a really strange theory to throw out there but Frank has always been a bit mysterious and he's also been somebody that hasn't really gone out of his way to communicate with his fans. That's kind of been a really, a bit of a point of contention for me as a big, you know, um, Frank Cushion fan. I really kind of hate the lack of lack of communication that he always has had with his fan base. He drops when he drops, he releases when he releases, talks when he talks, and when he does talk to you, it's always through this cryptic, vague posters on his flipping Tumblr or through some weird, you know, texting that he puts in a magazine but it's never direct you know he rarely does interviews or anything but over time because the music is so good and because his artistry is such a high level you kind of accept it right he's able to operate at such a high level of art that you kind of accept the fact it doesn't give you anything outside of that because the work is so good but over time it does get a little bit um, bothersome it does get a little bit corny and lame and over time the older you get especially you just want your artists and your performers who you kind of love and kind of admire to just do what they do best and perform all the other extra bits are really not your concern and are really stuff that kind of take away from the actual overall art itself so my theory about about frank is this 
I think Frank might be like those sports athletes, professional sports athletes, who are really happen to be really gifted or talented in playing a particular sport, football, whatever it may be, basketball, American football, NFL, but they don't actually enjoy the game. There are many like that who don't watch tape. They hate watching tape if they have to. They don't participate in anything sports related outside of their actual team and occupation. And essentially, they just clock in and clock out like it's a job but they don't love it. And usually those people are the first to retire really early because, you know, they collect their paper, they have their fun and then move on to other things. So maybe in Frank Ocean's case, he's just insanely gifted in terms of making music and singing. It kind of comes really easy to him. So why not do it? But really deep down, it's not something he actually wants to do because what you see him doing that he actually looks like he's having fun doing is Homer. Homer, he looks really, really locked in on. Like he hasn't stopped dropping jewelry pieces. People are wearing it and loving it. There's a whole entire fake industry around Homo. People buying fake bits and bobs off of it or flipping Alibaba and whatnot, which definitely shows you that the brand is successful when people are faking it to that level. Like he's legitimately doing really well with flipping Homer. So maybe his passion always was to enter into design. It was never music. So now um, and maybe the other side of it also is maybe his brother was the reason why he did music in the first place his brother maybe was that first person that was like you know what um, do it like please you're really good at this kind of encouraging him even though he didn't really want to do it and now that his brother's passed away he probably sees no reason to do it or whenever he does do music it kind of really does kind of take away or kind of makes him or maybe reminds him that his brother's no longer here with him that maybe is kind of the thing that I'm kind of feeling with this. So that might kind of be the reason why we get this really apathetic version of Frank overall. But I think with this whole entire debacle, this all could have been avoided if there was communication. That's the main, main thing that's really fucking over Frank. And I think nowadays people are getting older. His fan, his fan base is gone. He's getting older. The newer kids don't have patience for it. I just think nowadays, especially someone already said in the chat with the, with the price of Coachella, considering how much people, how much money people pay for performances at Coachella, considering how prestigious that festival is, even though it's not the greatest in the world. And also considering the caliber performances at this show, right? I watched Remy Wolf smash it. I watched Push T smash it. I watched um, Young Lean smash it. Um, I watched Bad Bunny headlining set absolutely destroyed. I watched Rosalia destroyed. You can't be at that kind of level because, you know, Frank's on that caliber of artists, if not bigger, and pulling a performance like that, it's just not going to be acceptable. No one's going to accept it. But I think communication wise if frank would have come out early on and said hey guys um i'm you know give me time i haven't performed in the ages this is just a set that i'm kind of doing for my fans to kind of see show you that i'm still here um it's also not going to be live streamed because i think that also pissed off a lot of people myself included all the sets so far have been live streamed without exception i think maybe the only one that didn't get live streamed maybe was bjork i think so but so far all the big artists have basically live streamed their sets but frank was the first person who stipulated last minute that he wasn't going to have his set live streamed and either Coachella knew this was going to happen and didn't say nothing because they wanted the people to keep watching their live streams and buy tickets last minute or he definitely did just tell them last minute I'm not streaming it so then you had people in the audience like kids live streaming the flipping performance from their smartphones and kind of you know broadcasting it live on Instagram live or whatnot and you know obviously the footage wasn't the greatest or sometimes their batteries run out or the network wasn't too good and then they were getting attacked online so it was just really really crazy in that regard so i think he would have avoided a lot of hassle if frank came out and said hey i'm kind of not in the right space of mind right now i'm also not going to live stream this set ahead of time and everyone would have left him alone the fact they didn't communicate i think really kind of added to people's anger and kind of made people really upset overall but then the worst part of it is this story courtesy of festive owl this account kind of spread this story that kind of gave some context as to what was going on behind the scenes so this is the follows I've been speaking with sources that know exactly what transpired and how things went so downhill Sunday for Frank Ocean at Coachella. Here it goes. The stage production was supposed to and did contain one ice rink was constructed and ready to go. So they had an ice rink with skaters ready to go that was scrapped last minute. This is how, you know, crazy it was behind the scenes and how frantic, I guess, um, Frank was. Frank decided at the last minute that he no longer wanted it at all. All of the people walking um, around him at the start of the performance were actually ice skaters, had been practicing for weeks and were supposed to be skating as part of the production. 
Coachella had uh, deconstruct and approved the stage and melt the entire ice rink and then set it up how Frank decided to do today with no warning, which is what you ended up seeing and caused an hour long delay. This will happen when doors had already opened for Sunday and people were securing their spots to see him. If the last minute changes weren't made, he wouldn't have performed at all leaving a festival without a closing headliner. So Frank basically put Coachella into a corner. It kind of felt like Frank wanted Coachella to cancel him. He actually didn't want to do it. It kind of felt like maybe last minute he woke up and was like, you know what, I don't want to do this. So he was trying to be as difficult as possible in order for him to cancel. But I guess Coachella also wants to get their money's worth. They want to have him perform, you know, and have that kind of clout of having him on stage regardless and take the pictures and stuff for the press media and marketing. So he just said, you know what, perform anyway. And then he kind of decided to perform, but only with these stipulations. It continues. Frank also personally pulled the plug at least second at the last second sorry on the live stream which left a very sour taste in many inside Coachella's mouth especially people like myself who are not there like it's, it's annoying ultimately I quote it just didn't seem like he went to be there but was obligated to be there everything including him fell apart last minute don't expect to see any coverage from the festival about the set something that is unprecedented in the history of Coachella the relationship is not in a good place right now so it'll be a miracle if we see him next week i am seeing reports that he might be there because i saw pictures of the ice skating kids or uh, the ice skating dancers wherever they are um rehearsing for week two which is happening obviously this weekend so that might be the case but to be fair i've kind of lost patience with frank overall frank ocean even though i was a big fan for me I lost patience with him when I went to Primavera Festival. I think it was at like 2017, 2018, around that time. And Frank Ocean was scheduled to perform there. It was one of his first live performances again for a long time. It was kind of his big European run that he was going to do. He had loads of other festivals booked up that he was meant to do along the way. And Primavera, I think, was the first one. Or maybe it was not, maybe it was, I don't know. Anyway, it was one of the first big European ones. And I partly bought a ticket to go to Primavera Sound to go see him. Now, don't get me wrong, Primavera sounds one of the best festivals in flipping Europe. And obviously, you know, going to Barcelona, you know, in the lovely summer with the heat and, you know, a nice chilled beers and the great food and the great people and whatnot, great vibes is amazing. And obviously, Primavera has some of the best acts and bands playing there. So you get your money's worth. So it's not just for him, but 70% of the reason why I did buy a ticket was to see Frank Ocean play. And then if I'm not mistaken... In 2017 or 2018, when that happened, when I bought the tickets, um, me and my friend were going, I'm pretty sure Frank either cancelled two days before we went or the week before. It was something stupidly close. And I remember thinking like, what? He just cancelled. And it was like, no explanation, no reasoning, no rationale, nothing. He just cancelled and that was it. And then, you know, I think, I forgot who they replaced him with. Maybe it was Rocky or something. I forgot somebody they replaced him with. Um, but yeah, since then, I've kind of always been a little bit side-eye on flipping Frank Ocean. Whenever he drops and is ready to put music out, I listen to it. But I don't get involved in all the flipping hoopla about expecting him to be certain places. If he goes, he goes. But I would never in any way, shape or form buy a ticket to a festival hoping that Frank will turn up. You know, I would only buy it going for the other people who are there and if frank turns up it's a bonus but i never really trust him to kind of you know turn up in those kind of places before no way no way shape yeah luke uh what's that luis shy is saying you count to two yeah two days before then two days before i've been pretty embarrassed sound festival imagine that man i was so distraught i was so so pissed off but ever since then it's kind of left the south test of my life i've not really been on that vibe again going forward but hey it could be extenuated. It could be extenuating circumstances around why he decided to turn up the way he did, and we could all be kind of completely wrong. But I still think he owes people explanations for things, especially when he's up here setting up jewelry brands, collaborating with Prada and shit. It just doesn't sit well. And there are even people on the flipping subreddit who are going as far as saying that I think Frank put out a vinyl or a single recently, and people are alleging that maybe that release of whatever he put out was his way of getting like an interest-free loan where essentially you put out a vinyl um it's a six weeks or maybe more kind of wait time to kind of get them shipped so that you can basically pocket the money and use that for other things whilst you know whilst the vinyls are getting printed and stuff that's what people are alleging on that side of things so if that's the case and you're able to kind of you know put out work and release brands and whatnot you can at least explain to people what your current state of mind is and just say hey be be patient with me be easy on me be kind i'm in a vulnerable space right now i'm not in the mood to do this and that whatever and then chill or the other thing i was going to say to the end was that i wonder why we don't hear more musicians who are also a little bit mysterious or just kind of you know take their time with their work why don't more musicians say hey i'm taking a temporary sabbatical 
Like Rihanna is a good example. Rihanna is clearly not in any sort of state of mind to release any music. She's absolutely smashing it with Fenty. She's loving life being a mum. She's got another baby in the oven. Her and Rocky are living the life, you know, enjoying each other's time and whatnot. She's not in any kind of shape or any kind of mindset to be out there being a musical artist. Why not just come out and say, hey guys, I'm taking a sabbatical. I'm taking some time off and I'll be back when I'm ready. And then everyone will stop asking about the album. Same thing goes for Frank. He's independent. He can do what he wants. He finessed the label. He's got money. He's, you know, he's, he's got the clout. What, why not just say, hey, I don't want to do this right now. I'm going to come back later. I wonder why that's not a thing. Why don't artists do that? Um, they just kind of string fans along and then they get upset when fans keep asking questions or expect something, but they never communicate. It's bizarre. It kind of reminds me of like influencers on Instagram. They love to flip in, and, you know, act like they're engaging with their fans, but you look through their comments, they don't even heart the comments. They don't reply to questions, zero. They just want you to consume everything they do, but they don't want to ever kind of give you any kind of explanation or communicate or kind of let you know what their mind's thinking and whatnot. It's kind of annoying to be fair, but hey, maybe I'm kind of overlooking all these sort of things. But regardless, the festival was horrible. Sorry, the performance was horrible. Really, 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 really terrible. And he would have to come back extremely hard next week um, to kind of make it up for it, to make up for it again. But the funny thing is, if you were to live stream it and just sing all these songs, it would go down the history as one of the greatest performances of all time. Because Frank Ocean fans are just that fanatical. That's all he has to do, the bare minimum. Just sing all these songs, not flex on the stage and mime along or whatnot. Forget the DJ. Um, live stream the set on flipping YouTube and everyone's back into his good graces once again. So let's see what happens next week or this week coming up. Let's see what happens this week coming up.